Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 26 on the 1st of May. May Day, May Day. I feel like I've been screaming that all week. I've been down with the flu. If you heard me last week, I didn't sound very good. Um, I don't sound very great right now because I'm on the other side of the flu, which according to all the internet doctors, the flu lasts five to seven days and has you know extreme fatigue, headaches, uh, congestion, and generally just wipes you up, which is what's happened to me. So those of you that sought me send lots of email this week, that's because it was all I could do. So this is going to be a short meeting, especially since I only gave people like three minutes notice that we're going to have it because I felt up this, woke up this morning and went, wow, my back does not feel like it's being beat by a thousand tiny dwarves. So the agenda is triage. I will do questions and comments and things like that, but um, I may have to have Bob do all that unless I break into a coughing fit, which I'm still prone to do. So, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that were unable to make it with near zero notice. Um, as always, Sean is here, uh, which is awesome, and we have, I think, the first time for John to show up, but he sent a couple pull requests already, so we're, we're rocking and rolling. So, uh, Bob, if you're ready, I think we'll go do triage. Yes? I am ready. Rock and roll. We have a lot of bugs, but most of them have already been taken by Mike. So these, I expect, will just kind of be nods to the thing, but we'll bring up what the settings engine is and so show that a little bit. All right, so start at the bottom because that still feels more comfortable. Documentation says it's installed. It's only set at startup. It's not changed during the bundle installation. Oh. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Question is, would it surprise anybody if we changed the behavior such that it said false when they did an install and checked at the end and it still said false? Well, I mean, just in terms of behavior change, this should probably not be a 3x thing. But yeah, it's kind of goofy. But, but I, it, it's possible. It's interesting. If if I agree, if if installed, if the MSI install property is um, works that way. Yeah. We should mimic that. I, I never thought it. about it, but uh, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because there is a point at which Burn says, I'm now installed, so it should flip this. It it, it knows. It could yeah. set this. <laughs> All right. So, four? Yeah. Yeah, I think just to be safe. All right. Sean's actually on the call. He opened it. Not getting into certain opinions in the comments yet, so we'll roll with that. All right. Redesign bootstrap or request state cache. Well, this is definitely for, well, okay for. Behavior depends on the package type. XE packs and MSP always convert it to none. MSI packs and MSP packs convert it to uninstall. They should all convert to uninstall. That's really weird. That this is a bug. Otherwise, well, yeah, if they're present, then uninstall. Otherwise, convert it to none. So, yeah, because so what cache is basically a state uh, less than present but more than absent. So, if you're present and you go to cache, then it should be uninstalled. How does the BA ask for an engine just to cache a package? Uh, set the state to cache. If it's not installed, it should go to cached. There, there might, there are, yeah, there, there are states that you get into where you, the BA requests are not honored. Well, those would be bugs. That's what this is supposed to do. Okay. So, so cache is between absent and present. Yeah. See, this, this is well. All right, the default is present, the BA requested cache. It should not be none. Well, execute and rollback should be none. Cache should be yes. Yes. Although, unless this guy says it can't be cached, at which point I think he wins. But um, How do you set that? Cache equals no. Oh, authoring could override the BA? Well, it's one of those things is can the BA win over everything, like the whole permanent thing, you know, and you have to do something very special oh. to get permanent to be overridden. 
Cause <laughs> otherwise, it's very hard. Otherwise, you know, because then your VA has to know about every single patent, and that gets annoying. That's the idea behind it, right? So it's like if you said cash equals no, it's not going to get cached. But anyway, this is busted. This, you're right, this line is wrong. These should say cash equals yes and no by default. And there's a bug in here. So yeah, I, I don't think we need to redesign it. We just need to fix the intent, which granted, I don't know that cash has ever been written down, but the fact that it comes before present and absent was the, the hint. So anyway, that's the way it's supposed to work. So this is definitely a bug. Uh, I, I wouldn't argue, <laughs> this is not a feature, it's a bug. When have I said that? Um, <laughs> Never. Anyway, yeah, so this is, yeah, never until now, this is a bug, and this should say cash equals yes, assuming this package, as Sean said it was, was allow cash. So, anyway, that's the answer to this bug. Uh, do you want it in 4.0 or 4.x? Um, 4.x until someone brings it closer. Okay. Um, it would be a good thing to have in 4.0, because if it doesn't go in 4.0, I guess it goes to five. We're going to start running into this problem in a big way. Yes. If we don't start getting the breaking changes in four, they don't happen until five, which is right. potentially a lot longer away. You know, five could be, oh gosh, I mean, it's going to be at least probably nine months before we even think about starting it, just given the way things are going. Right. So, yeah. This is one of the subtle things I was trying to make a point on with all those mailings I was sending. We need to get our changes in the floor if we're going to make them. Well, the, yeah, we, we've had convenient dumps. 3.x for bugs and features, you know, for the past year. Then, oh, 4 for breaking changes. Yes. Uh, and, oh. yeah, but time marches on. Yes. Well, we need to think about what's 4x on triage. I know you wanted to go through 3x on triage. We may need to go through 4 or, or I don't remember. It's, you want to go through 3.9 open. Yes. We may yeah, need yeah. to go through some of these 4X open and go, are we doing these or not kind of thing. Right. They're not going to happen in 4X. Yep. All right. Candle crashes when a WXI file includes itself. Oh, bummer. I thought we had a protector against this. Um, I don't know. I don't use enough include files to know. I well, I, we, I know we have it for variables. Maybe we only have it for variables. Okay. And it's like, include So anyway, I generally agree that this is a corner case, but it should be handled more gracefully than a stack overflow. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of dumps, I'm, I'm fine taking this in 3x. Yeah, I think 3x would be fine. It might be. It's not going to break anything. I mean. No. <laughs> implemented correctly, it's not going to break anything. Implement. Yeah, implement recursion. Well, you basically have to track and see if you've pulled the same include file in too many times. And you you create a stack anyway. Yeah, it, it'll yeah. be a fun thing to do. Yeah. Heat does not execute on this. Right, this was fixed by pull request number seven. And is Fire Giant now too lazy to set its own resolution? Oh, it's still untriaged. All it's right. Untriaged. Fine. They can't do that if it's untriaged. And I could have come through and mopped up for them, but I wasn't doing that this week. I was doing the bare minimum to stay alive, mostly. Inability to set null int field with zero value. This is DTF. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Do you have to put the magical... Null in? I don't know how this works. Uh, DT, uh, look, DTF is is smart enough to know wh when you call the set nullable variant or set nullable integer at least. Um, if if it's null, it does the magic number. I see. Hmm. If the column equals zero, you can't put null there. Yeah. All right. Well, three x. Someone needs to go hunt this down. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. it. Seems reasonable, like it would be something it would do, or could have done. Yeah. Well, if you have something called set nullable, probably you ought to handle nulls. Yeah. 
All right. Well, yeah. Tutorial website points to a site with dead links. There's this page. Oh, it's one of my very old blogs. Oh, um, <laughs> that brown bag. A reference to that. I wonder if that brown bag still it's relevant for way back when, but I don't know where it's at anymore because we lost it off of SourceForge when they did that whole big purge of big files. Oh, oh, right. I mean, this has been gone for a very long time. Oh, that's sad. It is sad. I don't keep wondering. I mean, I have an archive of a machine, a laptop from ancient that I keep hoping maybe one day I'll be in there, but I, I haven't gone digging for it. Um, this is true. What do we want to do? Should we stop um, linking to that blog entry? Let's do some video. Um, well, okay, so this is in the manual. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so so I, I, I waffle about this. The... Uh, I waffle about the duplication between the manual and the website, and something tells me that we should have one or the other. So I'd kind of be okay if we cleaned up some of this stuff by just saying the manual should point to the website. So what does that mean for people that want it in the chum? Uh, we should probably, well, sorry, my, my concern isn't duplication. My Duplication of content, my concern is duplication of effort. Um, the fact that the chum points to the brown bag, but the website doesn't is, you know, um, unfortunate. Uh, Jacob, I, I tend to want to point people to a URL in general. That's tougher with the chum. I mean, uh, obviously, if we put, yeah, if it's online, we can still point to it. But uh, sorry, it's it's tangential to the to the question. I just, yeah, if if we're maintaining two separate, you know, points where we have um, the, you know, essentially the same content. You know, we have rep links to how to learn Wix. Probably better if we only maintain one even uh, if I see so you're saying if we have a page that is purely a, a page in the chum that is purely a link to documentation then sorry link to a web page don't bother putting that in the manual is that what you're saying well other than I mean it's it's fine no I, I'm, I'm saying we should only maintain one set of links um, right, of, of pages that link to things versus pages that have content on them. If it was a content page that was in the manual, then that would be fine to be in the chunk versus a page that just links off to a bunch of stuff, right? Or let me just look at this page. Right, like this page. Yes, yes right. like this page is not a, well, right. This is not a good page for the chunk. I I could see that. I, I I would agree. I would say the chum should point to, you know, which well, set except for these slash. reverse engineering links to things inside the chum, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's also manual. Um, sorry, it, it, that it just it it tweaked my concern about about duplication um, th this is fine I mean you know the this page is mostly fine there's links to how to guides yeah but like the tutorials it's like the tutorials links I'm not even sure that's still alive yeah it's it's like okay <laughs> so there's probably yeah probably yeah. most of it's there but yeah but <laughs> um, okay. but you know we, we already have these links so, um, I guess what I would say is, you know, the we should have one primary spot where we keep, you know, getting started type documents, um, and everyone else should link to the, to that for general, 
you know, or include it magically somehow. Um, well. But a completely separate issue from the fact that, you know, we're pointing to a 10-year-old blog post that doesn't have the actual content that we're promising. So, right. so I guess the answer is to nuke that link? Uh, that is the shortest answer, yes. And it'd be awesome if I could refine that video and try to get it up on the our on new web server and see if it works. Yeah. It's yeah, huge. It would be good. I remember it's huge. But yeah. Plus, you get to see all the original Wix virtual team back then. I don't think I've ever actually watched the video. <laughs> it's I ancient. Assume, I look like a kid. I, I I'm a lot skinnier. Was, a, <laughs> uh, was, it, was it just like, you know, was it an actual, like, you know, captured in a, in a, is it beyond you sitting in a conference room? Yeah, well, no, we're, I was standing, and there was a whole bunch of people in the room, and it was a presentation that the, I don't remember, it was back, I think the, some team, in, maybe it was the Windows Installer team, some team in Microsoft was giving these talks, and I got invited to do one on Wix, and oh, okay, cool. We came in, and we put together this little demo where, you know, I check in code, other people check in code, we all sync and build and merge, and I mean, it's the demonstration of, hey, look, source control, 10 oh, years ago. Okay. You know, which uh, is not a big deal. Everybody has self-control now, but because ten years ago it was a little more. Some people, I don't know. Anyway, it was trying to show off that feature of the Wix tool set. So you were playing off. You actually had Wix VT folks checking in. Yeah, I had Derek and Kay and Reed in the audience checking code. Oh, in. well, better than features. Better than heckling, I guess. Better than heckling, yes. Um, yeah, so they, they checked in code. I don't know, I think... I have to go back and watch the video. For some reason, I remember some way of having a way of making fun of Derek for making some mistake in the code he checked in. Oh, that's Because <sighs> it's kind of what we did. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I guess the thing is to nuke this until... I, unless I can find it. Maybe I'll go search for it this afternoon. Part of me really like to find that again. I don't even know where. Uh, anyway, yes, that... I had a bag of chips. Cool? Cool. I wonder if I could encode it and put it YouTube. Ooh, that's probably the right answer. Oh, that would, yeah, for sure. All right, well, let me... <laughs> now I really want to go find it, because then I can get it up there. All right, so we're out of the Wix bugs. Still, I think that link should be removed from that page. It's not going to be useful in that form. All right. Yes, yes. All right, so now we're into the settings engine. Okay. Which is basically just a whole bunch of features and stuff that Mike is running, and Mike has yet to announce the settings engine in a big way on Wix does, at least, which is something I told him he probably should get to doing. He wants me to write a blog entry about it, which I haven't spent the time to figure out how it works to do that yet. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm inclined to look at these just so we get a feel for what's kind of going on, yeah. but generally the answer is yes, right? Well, he's already assigned them to himself, so I'm right. perfectly content and, you know, yeah. although now we're going to have to talk with him about, you know, the dates and breaking changes and all. Uh, not in, yeah, not in 4, but he's already dropped something at 4X, so he's thinking about it. Oh, oh, good catch, yeah, good. All right. So, setting extension could save a lot of space by using binary delta algorithms to store different versions of binary file rather than store each file independently. I could see that. Yeah, all right, that's kind of cool. Oh, Jacob may have found... Yeah, the blog entry by using the time machine. All right. So, yeah, that seems reasonable. LZMA compression support to save space and possibly CPU. Possibly CPU? Uh, does LZMA save CPU for compression? I think it no. does decompression, but not compression. We might add that comment, but. Um, well, I guess actually uh, it's it's one of those 
uh, it's one of those trade-offs. If you save enough space, do you end up saving net CPU yeah, yeah. time? Yeah, well, it's just compression isn't light for LZMA necessarily. But decompression is supposed to be really good, although cab decompression is not horrible. But anyway, this would be cool, especially if we got LZMA util out of it, and we could switch burn to using LZMA util instead of cab. So, hey, look, huge opportunity for wins all around. Right. It would be great if someone finally solved that first problem. Because I don't yes. think fixing burn to use LZMA is going to be a hard problem once we get a new container format, or the new, yeah, the new container format handled. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, that seems reasonable. Store binary files. So UDMA manifests are the, the XML manifests that describe how to find the settings. And I'm not sure how much he should do older style manifest and newer stuff. He's trying to maintain a lot of backs compatibility for stuff. I don't know if it's worth it within release. But we could talk about that. Monutal should be better support for removable drives. Yeah, so Monutal is a thing that Mike added to do um, file watchers and directory watchers and stuff like that. It's in Dutal in Rex 4, and it's quite cool, and he's been working very hard on making it robust because that is a really painful problem. Yeah, I don't yeah. know that we'll ever need it, but if we ever do, it should be pretty, really quite robust by the time he gets done because he's tried everything, and now he's trying network drives, which is not fun because if the network drive disappears the thing gets confused and forgets looking and stuff like that so anyway that'll be an interesting one excuse me settings browser tray icon should have more tray icons that reveal its status yeah UI elevation support yeah, there's a few apps that run with elevation, store their settings in an elevated location. What? That's such a bad thing to do, but yes. If we can write them, don't want to make the whole app elevated. Yeah, he's sticking to this. Yeah. Interesting. Elevation support for it. Creation date support. Files and settings do not only support backing up seeking the modified if they preserve the creation date as well. Yeah, they should. I'd almost call that a bug. But yeah. Oh yes, here's another one when you when you start working over a remote network path, which is one of the things he likes to do because he has a NAS box at home, and so that's how he keeps testing this. Is what he tells me. You lose your connection in the middle of syncing. Yeah, the remote server doesn't know to release the file lock, and everything just kind of gets stuck for a while. Auto update. Of UDM manifest and offer to upgrade them. About box. Probably. UI changes have some weird coloring issues <laughs> on certain OSs while well, they change on UI. Well, and make them more UI more complicated than it needs to be. Basically, he needs to improve the UI because I don't know if everybody tried to launch the settings browser UI. I mean, you could install this thing off of Wix 4 today and it will start doing things. It's actually pretty freaking cool. As, is it that it works as well as it does for Mike working by himself for so long just slowly as it goes along it's going to be a very cool feature when it's ready for people to really kick the tires but the UI is pretty brutal <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I are cut from the same cloth as far as UI I was, was going to say it's like hey. <laughs> hey that is totally the pot calling the kettle black dude exactly completely I totally hey takes takes a, a a a bad UI dev to recognize a bad another bad UI dev, <laughs> and I do not feel bad about calling it because man, it's bad. Anyway, so I, I Mike has been slipping these in under the radar because Tiny Bugs allows you to open a bug without marking it, without opening it for triage, which I don't know why I allowed that in the beginning. I think I need to go update Tiny Bugs to not allow that because that, that bugs me. We've had a few bugs sneak through that way where people are like, I don't need triage, I know what I'm doing. Right. But yeah, but triage's point is to know and talk about what's going on so that we have a record of it in the meetings. And yeah, I need to just remove that button because you wouldn't know that because that button's there and you should not check it. So Mike has apparently stopped doing that. So here's our first flood of setting bugs features to see. So now we'll get a feel for where he's at with this thing as it's going. Um, 
couple things in there I'd probably do before others, but it's pretty exciting how far it's come along. Well, the nice thing is, it, because he's kind of been working on it, you know, um, quietly, as 4 ramps up, it's like, this is going to become a lot more important to, to keep visible. Yes, yes, that's true. Well, yeah. I, I think it's going to be really hard until he gets a good API. I think that's, that's one of my biggest problems I've had with writing the blog entry. It's hard to talk about it as the way it's written right now or as the way it's usable right now. He does, doesn't have that API yet, so it's a little bit harder to get into okay. it. Yeah, yeah. For me, for, for the use cases that I believe in, it's a little bit harder to break into. Right. It's also for the use cases that he's done so far, and they're very important because he's got a whole bootstrapping thing, you know, getting the people using it. But that's missing some things. Anyway, it's it's cool. If you guys want to go take a look at it, you can go take a look at it. The other big problem is that Mike spends all his time working on that. It doesn't help with any bugs, which is <laughs> – but we're going to talk about that on another day. Not right now because I'm coming to the end of my, my wakefulness. So <laughs> back to triage. I am feeling much better than I have pretty much all the rest of this week. That's um, that's sad because you don't sound great at all. <laughs> no. Yeah, so I am I am sitting, I am not standing. So anyway, um, any other questions, comments, things going out there? I, I have one for Jacob. Oh, uh, how's, all right. How's, how's auto update coming? <laughs> I'm gonna mute myself here. I go to. Excellent. Um, if you read the threads in Wix devs, you know we're talking about, you know, uh, pulling in 3.9. Um, it's now May 1st. We're talking about locking down um, in like three weeks. Is that doable? Yeah, please don't break offline installs. That would be bad. Excellent. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. We're, we're getting through the bugs. Uh, sorry, we're getting through the pull requests, rather. Um, a little bit faster than we were, so that's yeah, good. Yeah, and I'm behind on the pull requests. I say what I would, I would do last week because, well, I went way downhill instead of where I thought I was going to get better in a couple of days. <laughs> Uh, I had a couple of nights where I actually wrapped up the day job before 9 p.m., so. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. That's that's cool, Jacob. That'll work. That'll work. Oh, yeah, very good. Three, engine only gets the 3.9 changes. And then with NBA, people can pick up if they want to use it 3.9 and then do that. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Well, I think that that solves that problem, right? I mean, we talked yeah. about that in right. the, in the long ago. Um, that's like, yeah, you know, what's the right way? What's the how much knowledge of the engine have? Give the engine as little as possible, and then, uh, you know, personally, I think the the and Neil did this with his extended VA. It's like get it out there in between releases and figure out what you know. Come to a consensus on. Um, you know, what what makes the most sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. And there are some questions about auto updates and if the user's offline, what should the VA do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has to be success with message. You can't yeah. error the install because they're not connected to the internet. I mean, just you'll make well, people mad for reasons they should be mad. No. It, it's just uh, anything else will end up making someone thoroughly upset at you and the only case where you're like they're going to end up at a bad spot is if they install slightly, you know, something that has a security vulnerability in it while they're offline and then they just need to get online as quick as possible, but yeah. All right. Well, uh that's all good. Um we're making progress. We had a well, Sean participated with in a good discussion about different thoughts about how we should um, move forward with different releases, trying to push where we're at now in 3.10 and things like that. 
Um, uh, it'd be good to get more people commenting, even if it really is just like a, that sounds great to me, or yeah, I think we should do that, or no, how about this? I mean, just a little bit more interaction so we at least get a feel for where everybody's at. Um, since off I fails. Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, I mean, luckily the, you can, yeah, calling detect multiple times isn't a real problem, except for the, um, there are points when you get into, like, completely insane patching scenarios that um, detect can take a long time. But we're talking insane levels of, of patching. Yeah. So, so I'm wondering, um, this is just a thought I'm going to throw out there right now, because I'm wondering, should we, I don't know, I mean, this is something that we could add to the agenda. Granted, there's no agenda this week, but this is something we could add to the agenda to discuss this sort of thing if doing this in email is too hard, Jacob, because we should have this conversation. It might be, I mean, whichever you want to do it, we should discuss these things in Wix devs, or we could try to have it here. Like an office hours kind of thing for design discussions? Well, it's just an agenda item, even. It's just like, here's our design yeah, discussion for that's this week. Fair. Yeah. And we could add another meeting, but I don't know that doesn't add anything. It's, you know, we have a slot here. We could use it. Yeah, that's true. Unless we start filling up the slots, and then... That's yeah. It. Well, that's uh, that's a problem I'd love to have. That would be a problem. That would be great to have. That means we have too many features. So, um, on that front, I think we're done. Yes? Anything else, Bob? Jacob's um, like typing something. <laughs> I'm good. Um, oh, ha, interface changes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can we can talk about that. Yeah, four X. <coughs> All right. So, on that note, I think we're gonna call this good. Um, we'll pick this up again next week. Hopefully, next week I'll leave a slot open and Bob will talk about three uh, X and where we're going with that, uh, or 3.9, 3, yeah, 3x. 3x, um, yeah. And uh, we'll go from there. Cool? Works for me. All right. Until next time, guys, have a great week. Later. Bye.